Good morning and welcome to sunny Baja and windy Baja. Finally slowed down and got a chance to spend some time on the beach and thought I'd make a video about our van, the Lorax. Uh, here she is, he, it, them, they. Um, let me show you around. Let's start with the exterior. First I had quad van down in Portland, Oregon do the four wheel drive conversion. They put in a Ford 150 uh, transfer case and drive shafts. They uh, shortened those rear shock mounts uh, so that they don't drag on the ground. Uh, two and a half inch lift. They installed the Van Compass uh, front hitch receiver and a winch that I picked up, this mini built winch. And uh, I think that was mainly it, some skid plates. Let me show you the, the winch here. We've got a diode dynamics light bar, Smitty built 15,000 pound winch with a synthetic rope, a um, little vanity plate there. And you can see the van compass skid plate and the quad van skid plate picking up from there. There's the drive shaft for the front. Moving around to the side here. There's a three gallon Rotopax backup fuel tank to make up for the crappy range of Ford's 25 gallon tank. You can see the transfer case there, the skid plate running back to the gas tank. The other drive shaft. The gray water tank. It's a 15 gallon gray water tank with a heater on it. Everything in this van is set up for winter camping if necessary. So because this is the only plumbing that's on the outside, I put a heater on it. There's also a heater on the, um, the P-trap there for both drains, the shower drain and sink drain. You can see the drain on the, on the 15 gallon gray water tank right there. I can hook a hose up to that and, and drain it into a hole if I need to, where it's approved. There's the condenser for the air conditioner. I've got an internally mounted air conditioner, didn't want anything on the roof. Skid plate for the rear diff, and you can see the spare tire tucked nicely up there. Let's get a closer look at that spare tire. These BFGs, quite a bit bigger than the OEM tire, didn't really want to fit up there, but when I took the stem out, I got a good four inches of clearance out of it. That strap is sucking it back into the hitch receiver area, and, uh, and then the OEM tire lift cable is just pulling it up. You can see the shortened shock mount bracket there that quad van put on. Uh, let's see. Well, there is a, a light up there. Uh, and we've got motion windows all around as you can see. I like the flat sliders myself. You can open them when you're driving. They've got screens, nice tinting, very durable. Down here, we've got the shore power hookup, 30 amp service, and an external jack for two additional 100 watt panels in addition to those on the roof. Another shot of the tire there. There's the uh, porch light for the passenger side. And I've got a little bit of rain deflectors here so we can crack these front windows when it's raining out. Let's grab the ladder and take a look at the roof. Got to watch out for the paper thin Ford sheet metal. 20 gauge, I think it is. So that little mushroom thing is a, a pointing nine way antenna. I believe it's pointing. Uh, does not require a ground plane and I elevated it above so it would clear the solar panels and interference from there. That picks up an external Wi-Fi or cellular signal and sends it to our internal PEP wave router. We've got 560 watts of solar here and another antenna for our cell booster which amplifies the signal rather than just picking it up. Max Air fan of course. Never forget that day of cutting the giant hole in my roof. Porch light. And put 
this ladder back down. I think the last thing to look at is the nine or a six gallon Go Westy Pro paint tank here. There it is. And I've got it rigged to allow you to uh, cook on a camp stove out on the beach if you want or anywhere, you know, rather than inside. Although we find cooking inside so darn convenient, there's no real reason. I haven't used it. I had to put a heat shield in. See that aluminum heat shield riveted to the existing one just because of the proximity to the muffler. Uh, and then these tires are aired down. We're a heavy rig, so I can't air them down too much. I got a pretty good bulge going on the front and rear right now. But the front are aired down to 35, and the rear are aired down to uh, 40. And to air up and air down, I've got an onboard compressor mounted in the step well here. Just closed off part of the step to increase the storage space. This is my uh, gauge to double check the the air compressor gauge. This is a Viair 450P compressor. There's the hose. This hose will easily reach all four tires. And then right here I've got these uh, tire deflators. I don't want to fish them out now. Well, all right, I'll make the effort. Um, let's see. Yeah. Ston tire deflators. And these are the heavy duty ones that can handle the bigger truck tires. Uh, most of the ones you see won't go down uh, high enough, oddly enough. You know, I, I want these things to air down to around 35, 40, not 10 to 20. So that's the compressor. I think that's it for the outside. Let's take a look inside. So I would call this a layout pioneered by Westphalia. I've had three of them. And it's uh, pretty roomy with the galley against this wall, a bench seat here, two swivel seats, a really big table here and a smaller table here, both on lagoon mounts, they can be switched. We love the cooking space for both of us cooking at the same time. Both tables can be raised up. I use two plates here for each lagoon mount so that both tables can go up to counter height and we can get this whole U-shaped cooking thing going on. There is a backsplash if we're doing a lot of cooking. Let me get, set, get that set up. That's what the backsplash looks like. We have a three burner Dometic stove and oven. Great for roasting vegetables and chicken, fish, and storing pots and pans. Um, a Vitrofrigo, I think it's a 107 liter fridge with an external compressor. We've got some great airflow through there for efficiency, especially with the window open right there. And because the external compressor frees up space on the inside, we've got a full width freezer there and two produce bins down at the bottom. Happy with the fridge so far. Uh, as far as storage goes, here's the obligatory what do you have in your cabinet section for the kitchen. This upper right cabinet has a toaster oven, which is screwed down. We keep our silicone drying mat in there. Keeps it from rattling when we're bouncing around on gravel roads. Uh, all the tall stuff, coffee grinder, a bunch of tall stuff. Uh, it's permanently mounted there and plugged in. And if you take this stuff out, there's plenty of ventilation. Doesn't get too hot up there. These latches keep the cabinets from opening. You don't want to know what happens when you forget to latch that. <laughs> Let's just say that all of these have come out at one time or another. This is um, bathroom stuff, medical stuff, and lots of food stuff. First aid kit, teas, baking, toilet paper, and so on. Another kitchen convenience that I advocated for, and I think Sharon appreciates now, is this little microwave. Found the smallest microwave I could. Had to notch out a little of the structural framing on the back side of the van there to fit it in flush. I didn't really want a microwave sticking out. I could have cut the handle off if I was really pinching corners, but we got it to fit and it's been great having that. We store our cutting boards underneath here 
and the glass turntable comes out and sits on these silicone trivets for when we're underway. It's been pretty cool to be able to cook stuff while you're driving without turning on propane. I built a spice rack into the van wall here. There was a nice opening for it. We've got our silverware in this the world's smallest drawer. It's hard finding glides for that. And some smaller utensils there. 14 inch stainless sink. Uh, pull down faucet with this odd head on it. There's actually a shower head. I'll go over the bathroom in a little bit. Um, and a Velcro mounted bottle of Dr. Bronner's. Love Dr. Bronner's because it biodegrades quickly. Down here, this is all of our dishes, the rest of our utensils. Um, Sharon, of course, needs this to make her matcha teas. Here, all food for the most part. And we put these silicone wrappers around the bottles. It keeps them from rattling and bumping up against each other. Down here, nesting bowls, love these. They all seal up and can be used for storage inside and of course just cooking. Um, this is kind of our root vegetable drawer and uh, some additional stainless storage containers for, for leftovers. Down here we have our nesting cook set, pressure cooker, Vitamix for smoothies in the morning. Mm -mm. We freeze papaya and banana and strawberry and make awesome smoothies with coconut milk. These all latch when underway. This drawer is not really kitchen related. It's mainly backpacks and exercise gear. Um, this is for latching the table underway. Uh, and then, of course, last but not least, the pretty gross right now recycle and compost bin. No composting really in Baja, but habits run deep. Both the front seats swivel, so we can actually seat four here at the two tables and hang out. Um, I think that covers it for the kitchen. Let's go over the bathroom. We knew we wanted a bathroom because we both get up in the middle of the night to pee sometimes and you know, it's just a fact of life these days. Didn't really want to be rushing around outside in the rain at 3 a.m. So squeezing this in was a real challenge. We knew we wanted this layout. We didn't want a bathroom that was full height and kind of blocked out the interior, made it feel more closed in and less spacious. So we knew we wanted a sit down toilet kind of thing, but we also wanted a shower. So what I came up with was this, uh, this countertop that raised and lowered and then a stainless steel shower pan down there. Uh, so this is a nature's head composting toilet and the urine is plumbed directly into the gray water tank. The uh, solid waste goes into the bottom part of the toilet and then once every two to four weeks you empty it into a, uh, into a garbage bag and th dispose of it with the trash. And it sounds kind of gross but composting toilets are really clean. They don't smell. Uh, you pour about two gallons of peat moss in to get it started and then you turn the crank whenever you use the toilet and it mixes it up and your digestion happens and uh, it's, it's a lot better than emptying a gray water tank if you've ever had to do that. This is a little waterproof toilet paper holder. So if you want to shower down here you undo this strap. Pull this curtain out. These are selfie sticks here. I'm not going to set the whole thing up, but you pull these selfie sticks out. The shower curtain runs all the way around. You have a seat right here, and you use the uh, the kitchen faucet to shower. Um, there's a hot water heater in the back, which I'll show you later. But um, basically, there's plenty of hot water. This valve right here allows you to divert the drain water. After you've soaked up and showered and the water coming off of you is clean, you can flip this valve and it'll take the drain water, run it back through our water filtration system, and you can take an infinitely long hot shower without using up any additional water. So, water recycling.
what else to say about the about the toilet I guess you know a couple little details this plug right here is for the fan so there's a fan running 24 by 7 you can't really hear it um, but it's always running it's like a little computer fan pulling air through from that side through the uh, uh, the waste tank on the bottom to dry everything out and that's vented out the underside of the vehicle we love it so far um, you can at night when the bed is set up put a cushion here so you have a full queen for your feet but we don't need that and we just leave it open so we can use the head at night and that's the bathroom the air conditioning system is an undermount as I mentioned I didn't want something on the roof so it costs quite a bit more money and a little bit more engineering difficulty to fit it in and route the ducting and whatnot but we've got this compressor underneath the bed here the condenser on the underside of the vehicle the thermostat controller right here and the return right here the vent right here um, really we wanted air conditioning for sleeping at night so when the bed is up we can take this insulated cover and snap it to these snaps up here and cool just the bed area so the air conditioner shouldn't run that much shouldn't drain our batteries too much but makes for a, a better night of sleeping when it's 100 degrees out and you're in a metal box this is the electrical panel from my boating experience I knew I wanted to be able to control what was draining our DC batteries for long periods of boondocking you know a couple of weeks parked without running the motor or charging the battery so most of these switches are used to individually control stuff for fine grain control over parasitic drains um, the Webasto heater control the tank monitor Fresh water, 55% gray, 100% uh-oh. LPG, 72% black. We have no black. Uh, the solar panel monitor, looks like we're making 315 watts right now. And the battery monitor, we're about 80% charge. This is the inverter controller. This allows us to control how much juice we suck from a shore power cord. So if we're parked at a friend's house, we're not going to blow their breakers and we can turn the inverter off to reduce draw. Um, moving on to lighting, we've got two primary light systems, these upper and lower um, LED strip lights, and they have diffusers in them which make a really nice even glow. So you don't see those little LED dots. And with the dimmers and the diffusers, it creates a really mellow uh, evening effect if you're looking for that. We also have task lights right here if somebody's working back here while the other person is driving uh, they can do so without interfering with their vision. A task light up here same deal passenger sitting here you can use this task light and then each of each side of the bed has a task light all on dimmers and they also have night lights built into them. These are the three exterior light switches, and then there's a main light switch which just kills them all so you don't have to hunt around and make sure you didn't leave anything on. That's it for lighting. Let's talk a little about working on the road. Sharon needs to have internet access th at least three days a week for her work, and hence the antenna on the roof that I already talked about. We've also got a router up here that black box mounted to the top of the cabinet. That's a Pepwave Max Transit Duo router and a ton of antenna wires heading into it. That allows us to uh, take cellular signals and convert them to Wi-Fi so the whole van including the laptop, my laptop, her laptop, both our cell phones are on the Lorax Wi-Fi and the Lorax Wi-Fi is connecting to whatever internet source we have. Right now it's Mexican tell cell. Um, the signal was so weak here that the regular passive antenna couldn't pick up enough signal 
So I turned on the WeBoost Reach, which is this red box right here, and stuck its antenna right up against one of the external antennas for the PEP wave. Now we've got enough signal for really slow internet. But since nobody else has any connection at all, and we're on a remote beach, it's okay for us. Uh, we also have AC and DC outlets here, USB ports here, in that corner, and right there. Um, so no matter where you're working, you're not tripping over cords. And uh, the Wi-Fi extends around the vehicle as well, so you can work outside. We have a wireless printer here, uh, which has been helpful for printing out and copying documents crossing the border, office supplies, and hard drives, and cables, and whatnot. Um, well, some of that, while we're on the subject of cabling, is for our 32-inch computer monitor slash TV right there. I'm not going to bother to set it up. But we can hook the TV up to the Pioneer stereo, get some nice audio going, and watch a movie if we want. Mainly we just do laptops if we're going to stream something, but every once in a while we'll splurge. We've got a Pioneer uh, head unit. And uh, what I like about this, in addition to the nice Apple CarPlay integration, is the, uh, is the integration with the CAN bus. So it'll show you your tire pressure, all the way around, door status, and then a bunch of other gauges, including coolant and transmission temperature. For the speakers, we've got Morel's two ways in the back. Morel two ways in the back. Really nice soundstage. And separates in the front, tweeters up, replacing the stock tweeters, and then uh, mid ranges down on the door panels. Won't bother to show you that. And then finally, oh, actually underneath here, underneath the passenger seat, we've got an Alpine amp down there, <laughs> buried. Uh, and then in back, the back door is really about the only place I could find it, find a place to put it, is a JL subwoofer, 10-inch JL subwoofer. Um, it's inside of a um, fiberglass encased box for good resonance. Um, don't really hear any rattling, although it's so far back that all that really comes through is the bass. So that's the that's the subwoofer and the audio system. In addition to the Pioneer head unit, I put in, I don't remember the brand of it, um, a rear view camera that's full time on because the back is pretty much blocked by the bed and window covers and bedding and whatnot. That's really handy to have. It's also a dash cam, so it's recording front and rear full time while we're driving. And I've got a, a little iPad mount here for a full time map. So we can put up Gaia or iOverlander or uh, Google, whatever. And a Scochi mag mount for my phone. This is our bulkhead curtain. It's on a track uh, I got from sailright.com. You pull it across, and it's got magnetic snaps that allow it to just kind of cinch up to the van metal right there, and a snap if you really need to hold it in place. We use this both at night as a quick way to close off the front if we don't want to put the front uh, window covers on the windshield and whatnot, and when we're driving if we want to keep prying eyes out, or if we're parking and we want to keep the back secure, we just close off the back and nobody can see in. Nobody knows what we've got back there, so that works well. We wanted to add some art, and we wanted a meditation focal point for the van, and this turned out to be the perfect space for that. The Ford Transit don't have a shelf here, so I put in an aluminum shelf from Van Compass, covered it with some headliner fabric on the outside, and some foam on the inside. It's got our backpacking sleeping bags in there, which you know we're really is door compressed, and Sharon's uh, medicine tools, and other odds and ends um, but it's a nice piece of art and a meditation focal point for us also mounted the max air fan and the kitchen timer there and our indoor outdoor thermometer and I was kind of reluctant to do this because it cluttered up the place but it just 
felt like we needed a place to throw little odds and ends, and I put this netting up across here. Just have to make sure not to cover the propane alarm and CO2 alarm. There's a secondary propane and CO2 alarm down there. So I've got one high and one low. This Velcro here, I'm not going to show you the whole screen set up, but this Velcro is for a screen door. It's a magnetic opening screen door. Works pretty slick. For window covers, I had Strawfoot make up some Ford Transit slightly modified magnetic window covers. You use these little metal plates here and some magnets sewn into the uh, cover itself to snap it in place. These are insulated. Go up pretty easy. On this side I put snaps in and had them sew some straps on so it was always available. Didn't really want to mess with storing these things anywhere. So this folds down and tucks behind. I'm not going to do it now. And then back here, similar deal. Well, in this case, I had them put the straps on the top, but I ended up not using, using them too much to hold it up. Instead, they roll up, and the magnets in the covers themselves just snap to the Ford metal. So that's pretty cool. The last couple cabinets I'll show you are where we store our clothes. We use bins to try to maximize the space, bins and rolling things up. So this is Sharon's side. She's managed to fit four seasons into this space. We live out of here full time for the next couple of years, so she's got everything she needs there. And then I've got it broken up into two cabinets, same deal, bins to maximize space. At the back here is our cold weather comforter. It's a down comforter. And on this side, our hats. Down here in the cavities created when I paneled the rear doors, we've got shoes tucked in. And same magnetic insulated window covers on each side. So I just pulled the bed up. Uh, the bench back unlatches. There's these two spring-loaded latches here. They hook in down here, pull it up, and it makes the whole bed. We love this bed. It's three layers of latex, soft, medium, hard. And it's a queen size, as I mentioned. These rear windows provide a great cross flow. And when you turn the fan on up there, the fan will suck out bring air in through these side windows. We get great cross flow in, in hot weather and we don't have to hear the fan right over our head because it's up front. Um, if it's really hot and we take this blanket and we mount it as a screen, then we've got the air conditioned port right there blowing cold air on us. Um, you can wake up to the sunrise out the window. Both of us can sit up in bed, side by side, and the sound from the stereo sounds great back here. Nice imaging. And these hooks here are for the TV mount, so we can actually get a big screen effect by sitting back here and putting the TV up there. Comfortable spot to hang out. Here's some visibility into some of the systems. so. This is our 40 gallon tank. It's held down with these two steel straps that are bolted with pretty large plates underneath the vehicle. Um, water pump and expansion tank. All the plumbing is nested back in there. We're never gonna be able to see it. Max tracks, backpacks. Um, the MPP charge controller right there. Bundles of wiring going into junction boxes. I tried to use conduit and junction boxes wherever I could. Let's take a look at the garage area. Crammed a lot of stuff back here. I've taken it out so we can take a look at it. Gray water drain hose, fresh water fill hose, pumping hose for pumping from wild sources. Um, regular extension cord, 30 amp cord. External solar panel charge cord. Uh, 
safe. There's an Excel water heater, tankless on-demand water heater. You can see the bottom of it right there. Tankless, ventless, runs even inside of a vehicle as long as we keep the fan going. This is our recovery box with shackles and line and uh, snatch block, straps, um, Sharon's bike, the kayak, the electric bike, chargers and accessories, 600 amp hours of lithium batteries under here from Life Blue. That's the uh, DC breaker and switch system, 3000 watt Victron inverter, the AC distribution panel. This is the mains and the distribu distribution panel just on the other side. That's the cruise and comfort air conditioner there. Big giant tent, uh, spray skirt for the kayak, poles for the tarp. So yeah, I haven't mentioned the awning. We have an awning that uh, clips into the 80-20 roof rail up there. I wasn't a big fan of the Fiamas. We like to be gone from the van for extended periods of time and those Fiamas will twist up like a pretzel so we just have a 10 by 10 tarp that we can stake down and make it really bomber. Um, two stage water filter, uh, one micron sediment and a 0.5 micron carbon. Um, this choke cable allows us to open up a, a vent hole through the floor. It was so dusty in these Baja rows I just stuck a piece of cardboard over it. Uh, but in less dusty conditions, we can get venting without opening a window. High lift jack with a uh, uh, lift mate, which hooks into the wheel, so you don't need an attachment point. Since the Fords the Transits don't have any lift points along the side, so I can just hook into the wheel rim. Uh, hiking poles, tent poles, tools. If you build it, you got to maintain it, as I've already discovered. The rear view mirror rattled loose on the way out. This road was so rattly. Um, and I've done some other repairs too. Propane leak, water leak, various other things. So connectors and tape, drills and cutters and soldering iron and wrenches and sockets and screwdrivers and whatnot. Here, uh, leveling blocks, pump for the raft, uh, some other water stuff. Most of our water stuff is out already, all the snorkeling gear. Two sets of backpacking gear, uh, ultralight backpacking. Since we can't carry a lot of weight, being old and feeble like we are. And uh, some extra peat moss for the, for the toilet. And uh, some other tarps. Our two backpacks, life jackets, max tracks for recovery. My mountain bike. Uh, I think that covers everything. Back here, now to put it all away. All right, that pretty much wraps it up. Covered a lot, but hopefully you found it useful. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below. I also have a blog that's a little out of date at sunlightintrees.com. I hope to be updating that in the next few months now that I've got some free time. And we'll be on the road full time for the next couple of years. Hope to see you there. Take care.